Hello to you and uh, thanks for joining us for Reporters, the programme that brings you uh, the very best stories from our correspondents around the world. An era of freedom and respect for the people. That's the simple hope of just one Tunisian France 24 has interviewed on the future for his country. But it is also the hope for an entire nation that there will be something better for them after the flight of their president, Zine El Abidine Ben Ali. He was forced out last month after massive protests against his regime, spurring the latest uprisings in Egypt and elsewhere. Well, France 24 travelled to Red AF in Tunisia. There, in 2008, around 300 protesters were arrested as they dared to protest against the Ben Ali regime. Welcomed as a hero of the revolution, Hassan has just spent a year and a half in prison. An unemployed social activist, he was arrested in Redev in 2008 with 300 other protesters. Today, he's going back home and is finally able to speak freely without fear. We couldn't talk. We couldn't debate. We lived under the law of corruption, of repression in a police state and the rule of Ben Ali, under the law of influential families and the bourgeoisie. Now we are entering an era of freedom and respect for the people. <laughs> Followed the new Tunisian revolution from prison. But the wave of anger that boiled over this year had already shown itself in 2008 in the southwest of the country. At 350 kilometers from the capital, Redef is in the middle of one of the largest phosphate basins in the world. But nonetheless, Redef remains isolated from the large rich cities of Tunisia. To get there, you have to cross the mountains of this semi-desert region. For six months, nearly 3,000 policemen circled the city and carried out a war against the protesters who were denouncing corruption and demanding work. Every day we were afraid of what we were filming because we could have run into the police. They could hit you or confiscate your equipment. I recorded some images directly onto my computer and others right here. This was hidden at a friend's place 40 kilometers away. Surrounded by his friends, Faham is enjoying his freedom. Just for doing his job, he was sentenced to four years imprisonment. He is one of the few journalists to have covered the events. At the time, the government was silencing the revolt by any means necessary. It's my family, my friends who supported and helped me in very tough times. They supported me at a time when we were reporting the truth. We were afraid every day. The police could come to the door at any time, hit you, humiliate you. From now on, that struggle is behind them. But for six months, the protesters never gave in, braving threats, isolation, and the bullets of the police. Some passed information on at great risk. In an uprising, a people deprived of real information under a dictatorship are obliged to find other ways. What are these ways? Well, the protesters, regular people, they're the ones who get in touch with independent channels. The media cannot send correspondents, so the correspondents are the citizens. In 2008, Facebook wasn't at all well known especially in poor cities like here. Nevertheless, thousands of locals have CDs with footage of these revolts. In spite of this, the protest movement in Redef didn't succeed at overturning Ben Ali's power. The man with the kefia is one of the heads of the people's movement, the voice of the protesters, and a leader of the UGTT in Redef, the only group of affiliated trade unions in Tunisia. For organizing the protests and disturbing the peace, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. At that time, we had no support, political power, or union organization in the country because we were considered to be outlaws. Don't forget that the authorities prevented me from protesting for five years. 
In the end, that was an experience that taught us a lesson preparing us for now. The city suffers from unemployment and poverty. Walking through the streets, it's hard to believe it is one of the five mining centers operated by the Gafsa Phosphates Company. With net profits of 150 million euros in 2009, the company is ranked fifth in the world. Phosphates are a great source of wealth for the entire country, and this is the main reason for the anger in this city. But this wealth, we don't see any profit from it, not Red AF or any of the other cities in the region. Most of the people living here make no more than two dollars a day. Normally there should be work here for everyone. The companies operating here could hire our young people. Zuhair breathes in the dust of this mine every day. In 2008, he was amongst the protesters. Like most of the local young people, he passed the entrance exam that grants entry to the phosphates company. And like most young people, he failed. With fixed tests, entry gained by payment, and positions reserved for families allied with Ben Ali, the accusations erupt and anger grows. It's tempting when you see the phosphate, such wealth in our own city and we don't even benefit. This drives us mad. We don't understand why we don't have any work, even with diplomas. We go insane. It's enough to make you lose your mind. This mine, we're the ones that run it, just a handful of workers. At the mine, the subcontractors, poorly paid and furious, denounce the injustices that they are a victim of. Let me speak. I'm 53 years old. I've been a worker for 20 years. I have seven kids. I have a son in second year at university. I made him cross the sea so that he could go to France. I have another son, and I paid for his studies to get a diploma in mechanics and take the entrance test, and he failed. For all this, I eat only bread and tea. They say we need diplomas, but I've worked here for 20 years. This mine, we make it run. Wait, wait, let me speak. For 14 years, we've worked going from one machine to another. Then they bring in people who have no idea what a bulldozer is, and they put them to work. A machine worth 120,000 euros. Then they operate it for, what, three months? And they disappear. Why don't they hire us to work for them? These subcontracted workers make five times less than the privileged employees of the company who themselves never show up for work. This is another reason why they took to the streets of Redeev. In Tunis, their protest movement got no coverage. National television simply never mentioned their demands or the deaths. At that time, Najer Misawi was assistant chief editor. He followed orders from the Ministry of Communication to the letter. It was an editorial line. We had pressure and instructions to show how the government tried to manage the crisis there. We had very precise instructions. The goal was to show the image of a regime that was trying to help the citizens of Red Ayef and get past the crisis. The announcement of social security measures for the region was the only news item broadcast by Tunisian television, the tool of Ben Ali's propaganda. Far from the offices of state television, a small underground channel risked everything. Hidden in a downtown building, an apartment serves as editorial offices for independent journalists. Each day they broadcasted images of the protests in Redeev on the internet sent by Fahem Boukadous before his arrest. The Tunisian Dialogue Channel was created seven years ago by Tahar Ben Hassim. This channel was the only media voice of rebellion. 
We took the initiative to go to the area and film, but suffered lots and lots of damage. Only from January 2008 to June 2008, we had 18 cameras confiscated and more than 20 beatings of our reporters by the police. By hiding the truth about Redeaf, official media outlets are seen as cowards by Tunisians. Yes, it is cowardly, but I understand I am lucky not to make my livelihood in Tunisia. Because if I made my living here in Tunisia, and if they'd made my life hell as they were threatening, like they did for others, what would I have done? Would I have been as brave as I was? A muzzled revolt, forced into silence and isolated. Rarely seen, we understand why these images from Redeaf did not have their desired impact. From this day forward, freedom of expression for Tunisians is no longer an unattainable dream. Amazing tales from individual people whose lives have been turned upside down by the Ben Ali regime. Well, that's it from this edition of Reporters. You can watch this story and all our other reports again, of course, on our website, france24.com. Until the next time, bye for now.